today i continue with uh, the last time session on changing bodies the last time i explained to you about how we change bodies at the moment of so called death the soul is deathless and it merely changes bodies from one physical body to the next and as i explained the greater your attachments to the world and to the things that are connected to the body the more painful is that change of bodies whereas those who are attached to god in forgetfulness of self they are free from pain and the transition between bodies is comfortable and painless even blissful now i am today i am going to explain further about how this change of bodies need not occur and how at the moment of leaving this body we can return back to god and not return back to this earth and this endless cycle of birth and death last time i explained to you this verse from mohamudgara stotra by adi shankaracharya and adi shankaracharya points out that punarapi janamam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jatri sharanam eh sansare bahu dushtare kripya apare pahi murare again birth again death again taking shelter in the mother's womb oh lord oh krishna please save me from this endless cycles of birth and death bhaj govindam bhaj govindam govindam bhaj moodamate worship govind worship govind worship govind you fool so today i'm going to explain to you about what the bhagavad gita says about change of bodies and how at the time of change of bodies we can choose not rebirth but we can choose to become free from rebirth and go back to god so in the bhagavad gita chapter 8 krishna explains in great detail many important subjects the most important one being about leaving the body and returning back to god so krishna explains that there is in this material world a constant and eternal cycle that goes on and this constant and eternal cycle that goes on krishna explains is the day of brahma and the night of brahma and he points out that 4 billion 320 million years is the day of brahma when this world and all beings are manifest and at the end of the day of brahma after 4 billion 320 million years once again comes the night of brahma and this night of brahma results in another 4 billion 320 million years when there is no manifestation of this material world but everything is held in abeyance until the universe comes into being again in the next day of brahma and then krishna explains but there is a place he says which is beyond this cycle there is a place which always exists which is eternal and once one goes to that place one never returns and that krishna points out is his abode that the divine abode of the lord is that abode which is free from these cycles which is free from so called manifestation and remaining unmanifest it is free from brahma's day and free from brahma's night and then krishna explains the traditional ways by which 
one can attain this abode of the Lord and become free from rebirth. To make it very simple, I'd like to say that there are two ways of leaving this body and not returning to the cycle of birth and death. The cycle of birth and death in this world is not recommended by Krishna. In the eighth chapter itself, Krishna points out that this world is a dukh alayam a shashvatam. This is a place of misery where everything is temporary. This is a anityam a sukham lokam. This is a place where nothing is permanent and you cannot find lasting happiness. Elsewhere in the 13th chapter, he says, Janma Mrityu Jara Vyadi Dukha Doshana Darshanam. Birth and death, old age and disease, fault and misfortune and happiness, these are all guaranteed to you in this world. So, Krishna in the 8th chapter explains the traditional ways of leaving the body. The traditional way is meant for those who worship God without form. And then Krishna explains the path that is there for those who worship God in his form as Lord Sri Krishna. So Krishna explains that for those who worship God without form, usually those who are renunciates, who have renounced the world, and who have practiced celibacy, these people who have spent their time chanting Om continuously as a spiritual practice, these people have a path and that path is described in this 8th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna explains that in order to take this path, one has to Choose the time of leaving one's body. Just like you had the example of Bhishma Dev, who was given this boon by his father, that he could leave his body at the time of his choosing. And therefore, although Bhishma lay on a bed of arrows, Bhishma chose not to die, not to leave this body until the sun moved into the northern hemisphere on January 14th. So the first principle is that you have to learn to leave your body when the sun is in the northern hemisphere, which is between, June 14, between Jan 14th and June 14th. Second, when you leave the body, you should leave the body in the daytime, not in the nighttime. Thirdly, you should leave the body when the moon is in Shukla Paksh, that is when the moon is waxing, not when the moon is waning. And if you could, by any chance, do all this and time the moment of leaving the body, and this does not mean suicide. This is very clear. It is about Icha Maran, which, are very, which is a very advanced yogic practice and boon that people acquire through spiritual practice. So not only should you leave the body during the sun in the northern hemisphere between Jan 14th and June 14th, in the daytime, not the nighttime, in Shukla Paksh, not Krishna Paksh, when the sun is wax, when the moon is waxing, not when the moon is waning. Indeed, you have to take a yogic posture when all the nine gates of the body, that is your senses and the various orifices of your body, all the nine gates have been closed with yogic precision. And having closed all the nine gates of the body, you can concentrate your mind on your heart 
and your pran or the life force on the top of your head which corresponds to what is medically known as the posterior fontanel which which exists in young infants when they are born and thus having concentrated your mind on your heart and your pran on the top of the head closing all the nine gates of your body you can loudly chant and vibrate your body to the sound of om and thus one can leave the body returning to the spiritual kingdom which is eternal and from where one never returns now having heard this you might well say that look how are we going to plan our death since you say it's not suicide do you mean is it possible for all of us to have ichha maran and the answer is that ichha maran is not an easy practice therefore the suggestion of the bhagavad gita is that this path has been mentioned and in fact krishna explains in this nine in the eighth chapter of the bhagavad gita the path of the light and the path of the smoke the path of to leads to the sun and the path that leads to the moon and all this krishna explains because this is given earlier in the chandogya upanishad but although this is given earlier in the chandogya upanishad krishna gives in this eighth chapter of the bhagavad gita a far far simpler technique and method by which one need not worry about all these timings all these postures and all this which centers around the basis of ichha maran and therefore krishna gives the technique the method by explaining what determines where you go after death and krishna explains in the 8th chapter of the bhagavad gita yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tejante ante kale varam tam tam evaiti kaunteya sada tad bhav bhavita krishna explains in the bhagavad gita that whomsoever and whatsoever you think of at the time of death that is what you shall attain and who do you remember at the time of death wherever your life has been focused that is what you remember at the time of death so if your life has been focused on your spouse you will remember your spouse at the time of death if your life has been focused on your children you will remember your children at the time of death if your your life has been focused on your grandchildren you will remember your grandchildren at the time of death if indeed unfortunately you have been remembering your dog then you shall certainly attain the form of your dog when you leave this body so whatsoever whomsoever you think of at the moment of death and the time of death that is what you shall attain and that is determined by whom you are thinking what you are thinking and how you have filled your life what fills whose thoughts fill your life thoughts of whom fill your life who is the person who first comes to mind who are you most attached to in your life that is the person you will remember at the time of death and that is the form that you shall attain and therefore to explain this in the bhagavat puran there is a wonderful story and this is the story of maharaj bharat and maharaj bharat he was a king but he was a saintly king and he chose that he would renounce the world and he would retire to the forest and he would meditate focus on god remember god be absorbed in him 
so that at the time of death he would remember god and he would go back to him so maharaj bharat left his wife left his children left his court and courtiers left his army and soldiers he left his subjects and he left his kingdom entirely and he retired to the forest where he would without attachment to anybody or anything engage in meditation upon the impersonal absolute inconceivable all pervading lord and thus he built a hut of straw and there clothed in bark he remained there constantly engaged in meditation and the chanting of om as as has been prescribed in the upanishads and when he was engaged in his meditation and his chanting of om he heard a loud roar of a lion and after the roar of a lion he heard the shriek of a frightened deer his meditation being thus disrupted he arose from the place where he was meditating and came out to see what was the disturbance and on one bank of the river where he stood he could see the other bank and he saw a lion pursuing a pregnant deer and this pregnant deer was running as fast as it could from the lion and when it came to the river's bank the pregnant deer jumped across with every ounce of strength that she had and as she jumped across the river she the force that she used was enough to also cause the birth of the baby deer which flew from her womb and landed in the tumultuous waves of the river and the female deer fell on the other bank at the feet of maharaj bharat and gave up her body maharaj bharat seeing <clears throat> that the baby deer was in the river without a second thought jumped into the river rescued that baby deer and brought it to his hut very sheltered it fed it looked after it and raised it and indeed that baby deer turned out to be very distracting for a person who was trying to meditate because when he sat down to meditate the deer would come and sit on his lap when he had closed his eyes in meditation the de- the baby deer would come and nuzzle him in the ears lick him on the face and disturb his meditation and of course that baby deer needed to be fed it needed to be protected so he was with that deer all the time and so the deer grew up in a short time and maharaj bharat was so distracted so distracted that all his time was spent in looking after feeding protecting and providing love to that deer and unfortunately that deer one day ran away from his hut and maharaj bharat ran behind it trying to protect it from the predators that lived in the jungle along with him and running behind the deer without realizing it he fell off a cliff and when he fell at the bottom of a cliff while he was giving up his ghost 
while he was giving up his spirit, while he was giving up his subtle body, while he was preparing to leave this body, the baby deer came to him and licked his face. And Maharaj Bharat looked into the eyes of that deer, absorbed in that deer, thinking, who will now feed this deer? Who will now protect this deer? Who will care for this deer? And being completely lost in thoughts of this deer, Maharaj Bharat left his body, thinking only of the deer. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tajante ante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kaunteya sada tad bhava bhavitaha. And Maharaj Bharat took birth as a deer, a king who gave up a kingdom, who renounced an entire kingdom, who renounced his wealth and his family to unite with God, became attached to a deer. And being attached to a deer, being fully absorbed in the deer at the moment of death, he left his body. And as Krishna points out, whatsoever and whomsoever you think of at the time of death, that is what you obtain. And sure enough, Maharaj Bharat became a deer. And it took many births after that, before he became Jad Bharat, and realizing the mistakes that he made as Maharaj Bharat, he acted as if he was dumb and even deaf so that he could protect himself from being absorbed in the people around him. But because he was so absorbed in the deer, when he left his body, he returned as a deer. So all of us, we should be careful because where are you forming your attachments? Who is filling your mind? Whose thoughts, whose cares are absorbing you? What is your life centered around? That will determine who you will think of at the time of death and you will attain that person. It is my belief that most people who are spiritually without instruction, who are unaware of this knowledge, often most of them are absorbed in their families, particularly the children and the grandchildren. And when they leave their body, they come back in a similar form, perhaps in the same family, and take up similar genes to what you possess. And thus you go on. Punarapi janamam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani jatari sharanam. Ihasansare bahudustare, kripaya pare pahi murare. Bajagovindam, Bajagovindam, Govindam, Bajamuramate. Thus, Krishna points out, and Adi Shankara quotes him when he describes the Moha Mudgara Stotra, also known as Bajagovindam. Again birth, again death, again old age, again disease, again fault, again misfortune. Hey Murari, hey Krishna, save me from this repeated cycle of birth and death. So in this session today, I have pointed out, last time I pointed out that by increasing your attachment to the world, you increase your pain when you leave this body or change this body. Whereas if you are attached to God and you're detached from the world, then your leaving of the body is not only comfortable, it can even be blissful. For those who are attached to worshipping God without form, 
those who are used to attaching attaching themselves to a god who is inconceivable all pervading for them this path is very difficult krishna says so in the 12th chapter of the bhagavad gita krishna points out in the bhagavad gita एवं सतत युक्ता ये भजतम तम पर युपासते ये चाप्य अक्षरम अव्यक्तम तेषाम के योग विद्यम अर्जुन आस इन द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ द ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवद गीता विच इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी मोस्ट परफेक्ट दो प्रॉपरली एंगेज इन योर भक्ति और दो वर्शिप द इमर्सनल ब्रह्मन द अनमेनिफेस्ट द इनकनसिवेबल and krishna answers and krishna says shri bhagwan uvacha in text 2 of chapter 12 maya veshya mano ye maam nitya yukto upasate shraddhaya paryopetas te me yuktatmo matah he who the blessed lord says he whose mind is fixed on me krishna in my personal form who is always engaged in worshiping me krishna with great and transcendental faith is considered by me to be most perfect and most intimately united with me so those for whom they want to be at worshiping the lord without form well then for them the path that is prescribed is described here in that one should be not only of the renounced order in life but also constantly chanting om and observing celibacy and then this person must learn the art of ichha maran so that he can leave this body between jan 14th and june 14th and he should leave in the day time not in the night time he should live in shukla paksh not in krishna paksh he should engage in a yogic posture wherein all nine gates of the body are tightly closed and with his mind on his heart his pran on the top of the head loudly chanting and vibrating om he must leave the body through the posterior frontal nail then he will go back to god and not return this is the path if you are worshiping god without form however if you are worshiping god with form it is a very simple process and to explain this krishna explains that actually whoever you think of at the time of death that you obtain and this has been illustrated today in the story of maharaj bharat and how he became a deer i will continue this next time and describe in further detail what krishna says in how you can remember him at the time of death and you can go back to him never to return into this endless painful cycle of birth death old age and disease and misfortune i will pause here so that there anyone who wants to ask questions can please do so yes um of course uh, good morning uh, dr nagakati uh, uh dr shantanu one thing uh, uh, you know i personally wanted to ask you was that um, you know we are in the midst of a raging pandemic and uh, unlike the last time this time we are losing losing a lot of young people to it you know people who are in their mid 30s even people who are in 20s so in case of sudden unexpected deaths uh you know where we think that you know people have their whole lives ahead of them and they uh, succumb to a pandemic or for whatever reason they die so in this case two things uh so in this case is this also predetermined the death and secondly uh in this case where you leave the body so abruptly does the soul actually ever attain peace there are many questions you are asking so you should break it down so i can answer them one by one what is the first question 
the first question was only uh, was like uh, you know we obviously are in the midst of covid so in case of unexpected young deaths you know uh, uh, so uh, first uh, first of all hmm. let me point out that i have already discussed in my previous session or sessions that old and young is not dependent on how old you are in terms of chronological years old and young are related to how close you are to death so a young person who may be 20 years old who is going to die next week is considered to be old whereas a person who is 80 years old and who is destined to live to the age of 100 such a person is still young so young and old are relative terms and dependent on the proximity to death and none of us have any guarantee as to when we are going to die and when how long we are going to live because i pointed out padam padam yad vipadam in this material world of birth and death and old age and disease one can never predict what is happening because every step is full of danger the next next question uh you know the next part of the question was only where, was uh, you know in case of a death like that does the soul actually ever get peace you know it uh, kind of attains peace see there are two ways to attain peace one way is to remember god at the time of death ante kale chama meva smaran muktva kalevaram yah prayati samad bhavam yati nasti atra samshya that if you can remember god at the time of death krishna says if you remember me at the time of death then you shall come back to me without any doubt the other way of dying and being still happy even though you are coming back to rebirth is if you die in the performance of your duty the classical thing described in the bhagavad gita is the soldier who dies on the battlefield and the, he says that the soldiers who die on the battlefield should welcome battle because that is the way by which they shall go to heaven in the performance of your duty if you die your mind understands that it is done something noble and high and wonderful and therefore when it leaves the body it enjoys this in the form of swarg and having enjoying swarg and knowing that you are dying in the performance of your duty that person leaves very peacefully so also typically we have covid warriors here we have doctors medical attendants and so many other people in hospitals who are doing their job and they are dying in the performance of their duty but that is a glorious death according to bhagavad gita and such people are guaranteed to go to heaven even though they come back in rebirth with a far better destiny so one is to attain salvation the other is to leave the body in through the performance of one's duty while performing one's duty these are the two ways by which you can certainly be joyful happy and at peace while leaving the body right um so uh, dr hanthano another question that we have if the world as uh, krishna says in the bhagavad gita if the world is so much full is so much miserable then why do we love life so much and want to live it again and again i mean that is a question you have to ask to people who want to come back again and again i remember once i had given this lecture in the middle east and when i had given this lecture in the middle east many years ago maybe 25 years ago or 30 years ago one person who never attended my lecture he came and met me and he said i have not attended your lectures but i heard that you said that whatever you think of at the time of death is what you attain so i have decided that i will constantly keep around me pictures of the sultan of brunei 
and i will constantly think of the sultan of brune so that when i leave this body i will come back as the sultan of brune i said what is so great about sultan of brune well at that time he was considered to be the richest man in the world so he says that is why i want to come back so good luck to those people because there are people who want to come back with a better birth a more aristocratic birth as sultans as princes as kings there are people who want to come back with more wealth familial wealth which they have not earned but which they have inherited and they believe that wealth will make them happy there are others who want to come back thinking they will be more beautiful or more attractive when they are unhappy with their present physical form so good luck to them to come back with a more beautiful body and yet there are others who think that they will come back into a more educated family become more educated more knowledgeable well good luck to them with that janma ishwariya shruta shribir e damana madapuman naivarati abidatum vai tvam akinchana gocharam those who aspire for higher birth who aspire for wealth for beauty and for knowledge such people are disqualified from attaining god and becoming free from rebirth god is only the property of those who have become completely convinced that there is nothing in the world that can make them happy buddha also said that your spiritual life cannot begin <coughs> until you realize that the essence of life is suffering that birth is suffering death is suffering old age is suffering disease is suffering to be parted from someone you love is suffering to be forced to bear the presence of someone you cannot bear that is suffering for those who have not realized this good luck to them let them come back again and again and again until they are finally convinced that is not going to help them there are many illustrative movies which give you an idea of how ridiculous this whole thing is where god comes and says i will fulfill your every desire and every time you ask god to fulfill that desire the desire is fulfilled but you become even more unhappy so in fact i think it is oscar wilde who said that when god wants to punish you he fulfills your desires so why do people want to come back because of all these things they are still in ignorance they have not experienced suffering intensely enough and they want to keep coming back again and again and again mm-hmm. i hope that's clear absolutely um doctor uh, nagarkati um, another thing uh, you know we want to ask is uh, a of course so what do you mean by mahasamadhi you know we keep reading about it there have been instances about it and can uh, regular mortals like uh, you and me or other people around the world so that is the subject of this talk which i'm giving and we have begun the process of explaining it today yeah. by explaining to you that whatever you think of at the time of death that you obtain and krishna says in the 8th chapter of the bhagavad gita that ante kale chamam eva smaran mukta kalevaram ya prayati samad bhavam yati nasti atra samshaya that if you think of me at the time of death you will come to me without any doubt and never to return so we will continue that next time Uh, you know why uh, dr nagpati while on this uh, the fact that you've said that uh, uh, whoever you think of during the time of death so someone has asked uh, does it apply true for animals also if they keep thinking about their master while they're dying do can they come back in a human form well animals have 
no independence the spiritual evolution is already chalked out it is already determined it is predetermined they do not have that independence that from being a dog they can suddenly become a human being the choice is not there for them that opportunity is not there for them that is only available in this human form of life but for that animal if it learns how to surrender unto god then even that animal can go back to god keet paksha mriganam cha harau sanyashta matpara that whether you are an insect whether you are a bird whether you are an animal a deer if you are absorbed in god at the time of death you attain him there are many examples of temple elephants of kerala who have absorbed themselves in god and served god through their lifetimes constantly remembering god and finally bowing to the lord they leave their body such creatures are probably unfortunate humans who have come down to that stage by accident and certainly have made this best of use of that opportunity to go back to god so animals can go back to god but as far as the ascent back to humans is concerned the scriptures describe that there is a predetermined route by which they can become human which will naturally come to pass right um dr nagadi we uh, you know we've spoken about a lot about uh, attachments and love in the previous sessions also so do excessive attachment to human beings from one human to another in the form of any relationship actually prevents the soul sometimes from leaving the body uh, at the correct time also of course attachment to human beings guarantees you another human birth attachment to god above all things determines that you go back to god never to return okay if i think uh, we can take uh, another question uh, so finally to uh, dr shantanu finally to sum it all you know we we established the fact that uh, you know if we uh, stay cl- uh, close to god and we invest all our energies in god there is probably a chance that uh, you know we will not have another birth so while while the birth that has been given to us how can we stay happy and content in this life while also realizing that you know we we don't want to come back we don't want another birth but at the same time this life which is full of suffering of course as you said you uh, you've kind of established that yet how can we remain happy and content so by doing your duty in a spirit of devotion and renunciation to please god living in society living with your family doing your work and your duties towards your employer towards your nation towards mankind but doing it selflessly in a spirit of devotion and sacrifice you will attain peace perfection and the supreme destination yatah pravrittir bhutanam yena sarvam idam tatam स्वकर्मणाभ्यर्चा सिद्धि विंदती मानव बै पर्फॉर्मिंग युअर गॉड गिवन ड्यूटी इज इन स्पिरिट ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस टू दिस ऑल पर वेडिंग लॉर्ड ईच इंडिव्यूजल कैन अटेन परफेक्शन ऑल सॉरोस ऑल पेन्स ऑल सफरिंग आर सेंटर्ड राउंड द सेल्फ द मोर यू बिकम सेल्फलेस the more peace you will enjoy and the best way to become selfless is to serve god who is seated in the hearts of all people around you 
as you add value to the world you will discover a value deep within yourself and as you discover that value deep within yourself you will discover that lord who is seated within your heart ishwara sarva bhutanam hriday deshe arjuna tishtati brahmyan sarva bhutani yantra rudani maya the lord says i am seated in your heart i am guiding you onward towards your destiny you are merely seated in a machine made of material energy tam eva sharanam gacha sarva bhavena bharata tat prasadat param shantim sthanam prakshashi shashvatam surrender to this lord in your heart and he will take you towards peace perfection and the supreme destination Okay. Uh, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nagati. I think uh, we're uh, almost out of time, and these are the questions that we had this week. Uh, we look forward to having uh, you on board next week. What if you want to tell us what next uh, next topic you'll be covering? What the audience can look. I will be continuing with this changing bodies. I've just begun the process prescribed by Krishna, where he explains that for those who worship him with form. should first remember this principle that whatever you think of at the time of death yes. that you that is what you have attain and the next time we shall discuss about how you can do that okay great thank you so much uh, dr shantanu and thank you everyone for watching we look forward to having everyone on board next thursday same time 8 am thank you